Hey guys, RC here, back with episode nine of our bullbound college football journeyman. We're starting season two, and unlike the first season, season two starts off with recruiting, and they have it shown here at the end of the cycle, which either way, the end, the beginning, but we are going to be recruiting today. Uh, there are 10 weeks of recruiting, weeks 8 through 17 of the off season. Then you have a week for player training, and then we get back into budgets, recruiting, all that other stuff. And that takes very little time. So, you know, now that we've had the full season and you guys have kind of seen the game, we can ramp up the pace a little bit. So let's get into recruiting. So this is uh, just like during the season, you have a weekly checklist and this will be the same every week. So we can check our email. And the first thing, depending on your prestige, you will get what we call an email player. And that is for lower prestige teams like mine. Uh, and this is the guy that wants to play for us. And this is in all likelihood going to be the best player you can recruit by far, by far. Uh, so you want to make sure, doesn't matter where he is, he's going to be out of your core market. Uh, he is going to be more expensive to recruit, but go after him anyway, because he's going to be that much better than the guys that you're going to have a realistic shot. And in this case, uh, his girlfriend got accepted to our university and he wants to attend so they can spend time together. So we're going to take action and he has been added to our watch list. Now I can delete this now, so but I typically don't delete anything during recruiting in case I want to go back and look at it. You're not really going to miss anything. I'm just kind of uh, OCD that way. Uh, and thank God I'm not really OCD. And if you are, my profound sympathy because I've seen some people that really suffer badly from that. Uh, all right. Now, I don't usually look at this one, but you can. Uh, you can see all the reds. Basically, our whole roster sucks. So we need to address our whole roster. Uh, but I'll show you a couple of things that I do uh, in recruiting. There's different ways you could do it. There's no right or wrong. Uh, so don't take mine as gospel. Uh, but I typically have pretty good recruiting classes. I could probably do a better job because I don't I don't dig into the minutia as much as some people. And that could possibly give me a competitive advantage if I did. I just have way too much going on, like my YouTube channel and having three kids and a granddaughter and 11 cats and two dogs and a wife. Not to mention the wife. Can't leave her out or, you know. The shit will hit the fan. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, so let's get into recruiting. Uh, so what I do is I go straight to the, I do basically three screens. I check emails and then starting in week two of recruiting, you'll see two different emails. We'll look at those when they come in. Uh, I look at the recruiting screen and the visit screen. So let's jump into that. All right. So here is our recruiting screen. And this gives a lot of information. First thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go down to my watch list. Remember, we just added that email guy to the watch list. And then I'm going to switch this just for right now to ranking. So you can see this is the number 1294 ranked player in the nation. And he has a 10 interest. So before I spend any money, he's already scouted. And we've got actually, uh, let me just double check this. Yep, it did add it. I just wanted to make sure. And we're going to go ahead and offer him a scholarship. There's a couple of rules of schools of thought here. Offer him scholarships up front or don't offer scholarships until you know you want them for sure, which is after you scout them for at least a week. And then the third one is don't even do your recruiting effort just scout players and then go in and look at their ratings and supposedly and I can't vouch for this but supposedly if you only scout them which is what will give you the rankings for the player right so basically we'll be able to see all of these numbers his durability his exam all of his ratings here his skill ratings right so if you scout that will expose those numbers to you 
So this last school of thought, and I know I said two, but there's three. So the third school is just scout everybody and then go in and look at their ratings and then decide who you actually want to spend money on recruiting. Now, here's a, here's a reason for that, possibly. Once you put recruiting in, like I've committed $4,000 a week to this player. I don't get that money back until he signs with someone else or he signs with me. So, you know, you only have so much money. You can see I've got $41,500. Now, you're scouting, and this will make more sense, so let me hold off on that for just a second. But I'm going to go ahead and offer him. Now, remember this number, 1294. I'm going to go to the entire pool. We're going to sort by ranking and then interest level. Now, what that does is it puts all of my tens at the top. So you can see the next best player is this wide receiver from Louisiana, and he's rated 1576, so almost 1600. So this guy is 300 spots better than the next best player on my board, right? Now we can go down to the nines, and even my best player there is 1504. So that's what I meant. This email player is by far the best player you will get a crack at. Now, just because he's contacted you, no guarantee that he will sign with you. Other schools can go after him. Let's say you're playing in an online league, right? You don't know who my email player is. This guy is still going to show up in your system. And remember, we just looked at him. So all of these other schools, he has interest in those schools. And we're actually the lowest. So remember, it's blue, then green, then yellow, then orange, then red, right? Right here for interest level and skill level and everything else. So just because he's interested in me does not mean one of these other schools can't pick him off. I always go to the watch list first, so I make sure I target my email player. Then that tells me how much money I have left. Now, as a lower school, you've probably heard the term, uh, you know, build a fence around your state in football. What that means is you want to be able to recruit everybody in the state that you're in. So you can do that. Now, I'm not going to be compete competitive with, say, an LSU, but and, and even a Tulane is going to be light years ahead of me, right? So we have a 29 prestige. LSU has an 81. And Tulane has a 39. So, you know, both of them are going to beat me to recruits in most instances. So, how do we go about recruiting? Well, I look at a couple of things. So, I like to sort by ranking and then by interest. And then I go to level 10. That way, I'm only looking at level 10 players. And then I can go down to nine as far as I want to go. Now, I will never recruit anybody below a six interest because I think it's a waste of time. You can take a six interest player and build their interest up. You can have a 10 interest player and lose interest, and they could drop down to a seven or an eight or whatever, even with those lower guys. And we'll probably do it here. But if I have a six interest player that I'm, that I'm actively recruiting, I'm not going to be on his list of schools, right? I'm not going to be in this list. If somebody comes in and offers him a scholarship that is on the list, I'll immediately cut bait. How do you tell that? Well, you see this little asterisk right here? That means that school has offered him a scholarship. So the AI gets to do it kind of before your week starts. It doesn't give them an advantage. It's actually a good thing because you can then judge how you want to approach that particular player. Now, this guy I know is a 10 interest. We're a green on par with Florida International. I can also check their prestige. They're actually a few points lower than us, but we're both low, so I don't have a distinct advantage there. Once we actually scout them next week, we'll learn a little bit more. So I don't usually dig into too much here. So if all you want to do is scout players, this is where you would start. And I'm going to go back up to the 10s. So remember, we've got the 1294, and this gives you an indicator of what range you're probably looking at from, to recruit. And I know one of you guys asked me that a while back. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scout this week. We'll try it out. I haven't. I don't usually do this, and I may actually decide I like this. And I'm going to scout everybody. Not now within reason. Okay. I only have so much money, but I still want to get quality players, right? So I'm not going to go down to the bottom of the list, but I am going to scout everybody basically above the 2000 mark. And that's just an arbitrary number I pulled in my head here. And that's going to change depending on what school I'm at. Like uh, in my online league with Texas, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in the elite level uh, and I only recruit, my initial recruiting is only the top 300 players. And then once I've scouted them and I've blown all my money, the next week, uh, all of this scouting, remember, comes back into your budget. The only money you lose permanently while they're being recruited is if you actually recruit them with a recruit effort. So you can see this guy is $1,000 to scout. So I'm going to add to watch, scout. Oh, and I missed this guy. Add to watch. And make sure you hit the add to watch. That's going to be important because it gives you another filter, right? Oh, and I don't want to do that. Hold on. Stubs. All right. Remember, I only wanted to go up to 2,000. So let's empty those guys out. Now, I, this guy is listed as a two-star. I'm going to go ahead and scout him. All right. Then we're going to go down to nines, and I'm going to repeat this. And even though these guys are one stars, remember, we have a very low, when we did our recruiting service last year, we couldn't afford the best one. So we don't have a guaranteed insight into all these players. So let me get through this. Now, I want to point out this player. Where did I see him at? Uh, S. Davis, Shad Davis. See how he has an asterisk before his name? So does uh, Decker up here. Those are JUCO players. And you can see if you click on them and you look, they're listed as a junior college, which means when they join your team, they will be juniors, not freshmen. And that means they will only have two years of eligibility left once they come to your school. The reason that they go to a junior college is they, they typically because they failed out and didn't have the grades to qualify. That's what that typically means. So they go off to junior college for one or two years and then they then they are eligible to be recruited. So if you and the good thing on that is those players are typically more developed because they have two years of actual development uh, in a program at the junior college level. So instead of being, say, a two a two out of six maybe they're going to come in at a five out of six or a four out of six so they could be more ready to step in to a starting job uh, with your program so keep that in mind uh, i don't go real heavy on juco players um, so anyway that's what that's worth now you can see i, I made it down to chandler here but I still have a couple of guys above that 2,000, but I'm out of money. I do have 17 scholarships, but I'm not ready to uh, offer them out yet because I haven't recruited anybody. Now, the other thing, let me go back and show you. So now I'm going to go to the five visits. Every week you get five visits. Again, there's a couple of schools of thought here. Um, I usually just do the top five. I've got a friend of mine that doesn't play in the league anymore, but he was adamant that, like, see how we have two cornerbacks? He would only do one player per position each year. So I actually have three cornerbacks in my top five. So we're definitely going to want Nash to visit. That's our top guy. This guy's an eight. I'm going to scout him, and he's pretty high. So I want to go ahead and accept a visit from him, and then we'll bring in, uh, not going to do a kicker. Not that I won't bring a kicker in, but not right now. So basically, you can see what I've done here is I've done one player, and I skipped over these two cornerbacks because I already had one up in Nash. And I wish this was bigger for you guys. I just can't make it bigger. Uh, it, and I hope you can see this well enough to see what I'm doing. Um, that's, that's frustrating that I can't resize this, and it's not an option. Uh, I've, I've looked for years. Uh, just can't do it. 
Uh, and so I've also skipped over Owens, this, sec- this receiver, because I'm already bringing Velasquez. So that's one school of thought is, you know, you don't want two players that will be competing because that might scare them off. I don't know if that's factored into the coding, but it makes sense, right? I mean, you know, you wouldn't bring in three five-star quarterbacks in the same week to visit campus. So let's go down. You know what? And we're, I'm going to bring in that second corner. We need more than one corner. All right. So now I have zero visits left. So we've scheduled our visits. The visits give you, you know, they come to your campus. They tour the campus. They get shown around uh, by another player. Uh, and then there's no, there's no cheating. There's no, you know, you can't bring them out to the strip club and you can't give them a suitcase full of money. That's not part of this game. Uh, but you know, that happens in real life. I'm sure sec. And, <laughs> but so the big thing, check your email starting next in the second week in week nine, you'll get a lot of good information. Uh, go into your recruiting screen, do your recruiting and then do your visits. So let's go ahead and advance the week. And I realize I forgot to hit my timer. All right, so we have gone into week nine. So again, we're back at our checklist. So now we're going to have new emails. And you'll typically get two or three. All right, so recruit recommendations. This is all good information here. Now, you can actually copy this. Do not, I don't, I've never tried to cut it, but let me show you. So I'm going to bring this over here. This is just a Word doc. So you can copy this. And then we can paste it over here. And then I've got this to refer to, right? Now, the other thing is we're going to have these pitches. Now, pitches are important. If you nail your pitch, then that can give you an additional bonus. I think I just did that twice. I always said I would never give this tip away, but if you're one of the guys watching this, then you can have it. I will share it with you. First time I have ever shared this since I started playing this game in 2005. Okay, so we've checked our emails. We've copied our stuff down. Now, in future weeks, you're going to want to do the last two weeks, too. And you'll want to do them either side by side or you'll want to do them right underneath each other. And so what I normally do is I'll do one week like this. I'll do the next week below it in a different color. So like I'll do the old week in black, the new week in red. And then you highlight all of that, sort it, and then it puts the players together. And then you can see both weeks at a glance. And then but based on the coloration, you can see the update. Now, where is this important? All right, well, let's go into the recruiting screen. All right, I'm going to go back up to all now, and we're going to go into the watch list. Remember, that's kind of where I default to unless I'm adding new players, right? We have this. Let's take a look at this quarter. Well, let's take a look at Nash first. All right, so now you can see we have gotten all of our skills in here. He's a defensive back. So he's got a 3.7 GPA. Remember last season, during the course of the season, you have three or four times a year that you can fail out academically for not making grades. A 2.0 is the minimum to stay eligible. So this guy, he should never have academic problems. So that's one thing you might want to look at. You might not care about that. Depends on what kind of depth you have. Okay, that's going to be pretty important for me at this level because I'm not going to have great second and third string. I'm not even going to have a great first string, but I want to have the best I can. So grades are important here. Durability, how often he might get injured. So he's just above average, but typically you would like that to be 70s, 80s, you know, but sometimes you just have to make do. And being that this is the best player we can get, I don't have a choice. And then we look at his tackling and his coverage. So I don't care about catching so much. Now, that means he won't get a lot of interceptions. He may, but he can bat balls down. He can tackle at, you know, decent. And he has decent coverage, which at our level is going to be really good. 
And we've already offered him a scholarship. You can see the little asterisk here, and nobody else has. So we've already done the recruiting on him. Now, if you decide look, after you look at this, you go, wow, that durability really sucks. I don't want him. Hit, don't just remove the watch. Remove the offer first. Clear your actions second, because that then refunds your recruiting money into your budget and then remove him. Because if you don't clear your action or remove the offer, then he still has a scholarship offer, which he could accept even if you don't want him. And there's no way to, to bypass that once he's accepted. Also, you want your money back so you can spend that money recruiting another player. So start from the right here. Remove your offer, clear your action, remove watch, and then he will no longer be on your list if you don't want him. So we can do that. So what I wanna do now is I wanna go in, I have this filter set up, so we've got it by ranking, right? And I know it's only tens and nines with one exception. Remember we, we scouted that, that quarterback right here? No, not that one. This one, Weaver, that was the one we added. But now you see we've got a couple of guys that are down into the eights and sevens. This is the drawback of not recruiting out of the gate. So let's look at these guys. Well, you see, he's gotten four offers. So I'm already behind these other clubs, these other not clubs because it's football manager. We're already behind these other teams, but I'm not so far behind I couldn't make up ground if I wanted to. So now here's the other thing. Remember, we pasted this over here. Well, this is what your coaches, your scouts are telling you is important to this player. Now, these aren't guaranteed and they can change week to week. So that's why I mentioned putting two weeks at a time. Now, every week that you progress, you will open up a, a new option over here. So we can tell Larry Walker, let's find him. All right, he's right here. So according to my scouts, playing time and location are very important to him. So those are going to be the two that I'd look at. Now, this tells me head coach is somewhat important, but that's not going. So they always will have three very important and three somewhat or not important because there's only six to choose from in here. OK, you get one new one that opens up each week. And then this will change each week. So let's say, let's say I was looking at him and it said playing time and location. And then I came in here, here's the tip, and it said it doesn't have playing time, but it said location is somewhat important. Well, that tells you that location is not the important topic, and that guarantees that playing time is. So I could go in here, pick playing time, and nail that pitch. So there's your tip. Now, if you don't have either one of them, you don't know which one of these is going to be until it tells you that it's not. And that says head coach is really not important. We're looking for the most important thing, and that's only going to come with evaluation of this list, comparing it to what your coaches are telling you, and then making an educated decision based on what you're being told by the game. So it gives you the answer, just sometimes you have to wait for it, okay? So what I do now is I go into here, I go into the watch list, and I just start at quarterback, okay? You can do lots of different things, but since I haven't actually recruited, a lot of times I recruit the best player, whatever the highest rank is, I'll recruit that way. If I play with Texas and I've got the best scouting service, then I feel comfortable that if, if my scouting service is telling me this guy's the number six player in the nation and he's the number two quarterback in the nation, I'm probably going to be very happy with him. I can't judge as well at this level because we don't have the best scouting service. So a lot of that's going to be up in the air. But what I can do is I can go into ratings. Okay. Weaver, remember, I only accepted a visit, so I want to scout him. And he was our second highest player. So I'm going to go ahead and recruit and offer him a scholarship, even though I don't know what his numbers are. I can always come back and pull it away. 
Okay. And remember, he's a Juco player. So it means he'll be better able to come in and start right away. All right. Now, here's where you start looking. So you see Broussard. And in this screen, we can see their passing ratings. We can see their running ability. We can see their catching ability. I can then go through here and look at their high school ranking. And that's on a one to five scale. Five is your best schools. Um, is that right? Yeah, I think five is your best, one is your worst. And I agree, Lafayette High is the worst. That's my high school's arch rival. <laughs> uh, so anyway, you can look there. We can look here. This gives us uh, their 40 time. I don't really look at that too much. This is what I really want to look at. And then the other thing I want to look at is not even on here. So. Let's look at Marino, for example. He has the best arm. He can also run, but he has no durability. So if I run him, he's likely to get hurt. So that's going to be troubling. Now, there's two other factors that you don't find out until they join your team. So you kind of have to take a flyer. And that is intelligence and instincts for quarterbacks. It's not anything that you can discover here. You have to sign them on blind faith and hope for the best. Um, and those are direct correlations into a quarterback's success. Uh, passing, but passing is the, the root. So there's really nothing here. Now, this is something else you can do. We can actually retrain. So this guy's six foot two, right? He's got a 3.0 GPA, 62 durability. Look at his running and catching ability. He can't throw great, but boy, he might make a really good wide receiver or tight end. So we could sign him, even though he's a quarterback, when we get to training, we can retrain him into another position. It may work out, it may not, but that is an indicator that he could be good at another position. And even though he's a one star, with a 67, that might be a three-star receiver. So I'm going to take a gamble on this guy, and we're going to offer him as a receiver. Now, that's where you'll want to make a note. Hey, Foreman, you know, so I'll come up here, quarterback, Foreman, uh, retrain to wide receiver. Okay, and that way I can remember as I'm progressing in the game. So that's basically what I do. So now we've looked at quarterbacks. I don't particularly like any of these guys. So then we've got a running back. Now this guy has, now see this running back is an athlete. So it means he could be an option style, but he could all, you know, a mobile quarterback, but his passing isn't great. Uh, so I'm going to remove him from the watch list. But this white guy, let's look at him. So he's only a two-star, 1701, but he's got a 60 running ability and a 92 durability and a 2.7 GPA. So I like that. But I need to go back to another screen to kind of show you, and this is where we'll close out, right here. So the first number is how many quarterbacks you have offered a scholarship, including the ones on your roster. The one on the right is how many you have to have. So we only need three quarterbacks. I've got five, but we got that one guy that I'm going to retrain to a receiver, and we need a receiver. So now instead of recruiting two receivers, I only need to recruit one, and I only have really four quarterbacks, not three. So that's something to look at. But we do need a running back. I like this guy. GPA should keep him eligible. Durability, he should never get hurt, and he can run like, like a demon, and he's got eh, decent pass catching. So let's go ahead and recruit him, offer a scholarship, and this, we want to, I want to sort this out here. There we go. We're going to sort this, and that puts it in position order, alphabetical. The other thing we can do is sort. So we're looking at Gordon White, running back. So he's got average interest, and he has four offers. So we can tell at a glance, 
It's going to be hard to get this guy. He already has four offers. Now, this is why you would keep this. I want to go in and make sure that we all accept his visit this week. So there's white. So when you accept a visit, that gives you a bonus, a chance to get a recruiting bonus to bump you up a little bit. Uh, bo bonus points, basically. And the same thing with nailing your pitch. That's why don't jump to the pitch until you're positive, unless in a case like this, right, we've got all these other schools. Well, let's look at him, see if we can determine what his interest is. So it says chance to win and playing time. Now here's where you got it. So we know it's got to be one of those two. Both of them aren't guaranteed, but we already know playing time is not, right? It tells us that. So playing time is not important. That means chance to win is his pick. And so we're going to go ahead and lock that in. Now, you have to be on this screen to do that. You can't do that from this screen. So if we go back to him again, you see chance to win is still in there. Now, once you've put it in, you can't change it. So you can't change it the next week. Once you put it in, it's in. Now, if I put it in now, I could always change it back to none today before I advance the week. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go ahead and end the episode here. We will pick up at this point of recruiting in the next episode. So if you guys have questions, comments, let me know down below. Hit the like button and subscribe for daily content here on the channel. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye.